This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1945. Metabolic Confusion, Why You Can't Outsmart Your Metabolism, part two, by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Hey there, happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday of Thanksgiving week if you're in the US, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more just like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors, and always with permission from the sites and always with a bit of my commentary at the end. Now, today's post is part two from yesterday. So if you're new here or skipping around, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. That was episode 1944. But if you're all caught up, let's hear part two and continue optimizing your life. Metabolic Confusion Why You Can't Outsmart Your Metabolism, Part 2, by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. Metabolic Confusion Diet Plan Diet plans designed around the idea of metabolic confusion can be a very effective way to lose fat, but that's not because they confuse your metabolism. Rather, it's because they allow for some flexibility and freedom in your diet, which in turn makes it easier to stick with that diet long enough to reach your goal. Let me show you what I mean. When designing any meal plan, the first step is to calculate how many calories you should be eating. While this method for estimating what your calorie intake should be isn't 100% accurate, no method really is, it does give you a rough idea. You can then adjust and modify this number over time based on how your body responds. Take your body weight in pounds and add a zero to the end. Then multiply that number by seven to obtain your total weekly calories. For example, If you weigh 200 pounds, your average calorie intake should be around 2,000 calories per day. Over the course of the week, that comes to 14,000 calories. To repeat, this number is just an estimate and will need to be adjusted over time as weight is lost, but it's a quick and simple way to get you started. In theory, our diet plan then would look like this. Monday through Sunday, consume 2,000 calories every day for a total of 14,000 calories for the week. 2,000 calories per day times seven days per week equals 14,000 calories. But let's be honest, who's gonna do that? Who's gonna eat the exact same number of daily calories from one day to the next for any length of time? I'm not, and you're probably not either. This type of rigid meal plan can work in the short term, but such a monotonous diet is probably not going to work for very long. It's just not a good fit for the way most people live their lives. But if you know how many calories you should be eating over the course of the week, you can adjust your daily calorie intake from day to day. As long as you stay within your calorie budget for the week, you're going to lose weight. For example, you're going out for dinner on Saturday night and you know that you're gonna end up eating more than 2,000 calories that day. Rather than choose something from the boring diet menu that you don't really want or skip dessert, the extra calories can simply be pulled in from other days. This way, you get to enjoy a night out without feeling guilty that you're messing up your diet. Here's what this might look like. Monday, consume 2,000 calories. Tuesday, 2,000 calories. Wednesday, 1,000 calories. Thursday, back up to 2,000 calories. Friday, 2,000 calories. Saturday, because we're dining out, 4,000 calories. And Sunday, 1,000 calories. This results in a total of 14,000 calories for the week. So you're still eating the same amount over the course of the week, but you're switching between a high and low calorie intake. That gives you more flexibility and choice about what and when you eat. Some days are low carb days. One or two might be high carb days, while the rest are somewhere in the middle. Here's another example of the type of thing I mean. Let's say you do regular exercise three days per week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday you want more energy for your workouts and decide to eat more on the days you train, in which case your meal plan might look something like this. Monday, 2,500 calories, high carb day. Tuesday, 1,500 calories, low carb day. Wednesday, 2,500 calories, high carb day. Thursday, 1,500 calories, low carb day. Friday, 2,500 calories, high carb day. Saturday. 1,500 calories, low carb day, and Sunday, 2,000 calories, moderate carb day. 
This results in a total of 14,000 calories for the week. Again, your total calorie intake over the course of the week is the same, but you've done so by alternating between a high and low calorie intake. It makes for a much less monotonous diet. To repeat, these diet plans have nothing to do with metabolic confusion. They just make it easier to be consistent with your diet, which is the real key to losing weight and keeping it off. Irrespective of how many calories you're consuming on any given day, it's important to make sure you're getting enough protein in your diet. In other words, you don't want to cycle your protein intake. Keep protein intake static from one day to the next and adjust the level of carbs and fat in your diet. The reason why is that protein has a couple of important roles to play when it comes to weight loss. First, it helps to preserve muscle mass while you drop fat. Without adequate amounts of protein, you'll end up losing muscle as well as fat. Protein also does a better job at filling you up than carbohydrate or fat, making it easier to control your hunger. That protein can come from whole foods such as chicken, tuna, or turkey, or a few high-protein snacks, like a protein shake or a protein bar. In many cases, the addition of one to two protein-rich snacks to your regular diet is an easy and convenient way to get the extra protein you need. In total, your daily protein intake should be around 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight, or 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. The Metabolic Confusion Diet and Endomorphs For reasons that remain mysterious, the subject of metabolic confusion seems to be closely linked to the so-called endomorph body type. That is, when I search for metabolic confusion, these questions appear in the People Also Ask results. How do endomorphs lose weight? What are the three types of metabolism? And what foods should an endomorph eat to lose weight? From what I can tell, having an endomorph body type, which is often referred to as having a large bone structure and maybe sometimes referred to as husky or chunky, supposedly makes you the perfect candidate for the metabolic confusion diet. Here's how one article describes it. Quote, creating metabolic confusion through a carb cycling plan is the best way to help endomorphs lose weight. With constant alterations in the level of carbs in the body, the creation of confusion in the body's metabolism can help endomorphs tackle carb insensitivity and deal with slower metabolisms in a much more efficient way. End quote. The whole idea that your body type can be used to determine what diet you should follow is complete nonsense. Nobody cites any studies or evidence to support the claim that endomorphs are better suited to a metabolic confusion diet because there isn't any. It's completely fictitious nonsense, which has been made up on the spot or copied and pasted from someone else. This thing happens a lot in the fitness and diet world. Guru A makes a statement. Guru B repeats that statement. Then it's parroted by someone else further down the guru line of command. Said statement has now taken on the appearance of a fact, simply because there are so many people claiming that it's true. Recommendations that a mesomorph should eat this or an endomorph should eat that, are perfect examples of Barnum statements. The advice is so vague in general that it could apply to anyone. Final thoughts. Calorie cycling, particularly when it involves ramping up your carb intake, does have a number of benefits. It gives you a mental break from the grind of eating, you have more energy, you perform better in the gym, and you just feel a whole lot better. However, there's very little evidence to show that calorie cycling has any significant impact on your resting metabolism. And even if it did, the extent to which changes in metabolic rate contribute to fat loss is relatively small. While you might find it easier to stick with a diet that involves some kind of calorie cycling, don't expect your metabolism to change dramatically as a result. You just listened to part two of the post titled Metabolic Confusion, Why You Can't Outsmart Your Metabolism by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. So let's take a second and think about what the main takeaway from these studies on metabolic confusion really tell us. When we think about everything Christian shared with us these past two days, here are the conclusions we can reach. Are you ready? This is going to be earth shattering. Do you sense my sarcasm? Here we go. Losing and maintaining body weight is about one, calorie balance, basically calories in versus calories out, And two, finding a meal plan that you can stick to over the long term. Basically, a meal plan that you can adapt when it starts to feel boring or monotonous 
but still keeps you within your calorie goals. Are you really that surprised? All right, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening every day. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm gonna follow my annual Thanksgiving tradition and go watch planes, trains, and automobiles, but I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.